Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Out again for a woods walk. Thanks for joining me. Hey, look at look at these trees behind me here. You'll see those cedar trees, but all the deciduous trees that you're seeing, well, I shouldn't say all, but 95% of the trees that you're seeing there are chestnut oak. Let me talk about some things about chestnut oak. One of the ways I always notice, here's a good one right next to me here, is the bark is very deep and furrowed, okay? For example, I can stick my whole thumb inside that and I could look from the side and not see my thumb. It's that deep. Uh, I usually look at it from how many digits of my fingers can go down in there just as a means of just looking at it and getting an idea. This goes all the way to the first digit. That's how deep those are, those valleys inside there. So uh, you'll often see this bluish gray lichen upon these trees. And uh, another aspect of this is is uh, where these trees are located. As you'll notice, I'm up on top of a ridge. If we were to walk down into that holler behind me there, uh, that's where you start getting into some white oaks. Pretty familiar with this property up here. I'm thinking, I don't think there's a white oak on this ridge top. It's all chestnut oaks, some hickories, and a couple pine trees, and then the cedar trees. And again, 95% of these trees are chestnut oak. Uh, I, I point that out because uh, geographical location, just in a broad sense, uh, based upon the physiographic region of an area, you know, what kind of geology is there, what kind of soil is there, that helps determine what trees will grow there. And then the actual topography of an area, meaning these trees really grow on this ridge top and I think this is true, don't hold me to this one, but I think chestnut oaks just don't need as much water as a white oak, for example. And so down there where there's more water runoff, you'll get the white oaks. Um, yeah, I, I think that's true. Uh, don't hold me to that one. I, I, I'm, I don't know if that's the exact way of explaining it, but I just know that's, the, the, uh, that's what I see. I see a lot of chestnut oaks on the ridge tops here on this property, uh, in the, where I'm from here in Kentucky, uh, Daniel Boone National Forest, when grouse hunting when I was younger and doing it quite a bit, you would, you would uh, go up and down the hills, you get to a ridge top, you'd always run into these chestnut oak trees. So, um, you know, I was doing some research, and maybe this would interest you too. Uh, I was doing some research for a project I'm working on for the Kentucky Master Naturalist certification. And research is a fancy way of saying me just reading books about trees. <laughs> so uh, there's a uh, Mark Warren, who was a uh, trained chemist. He was really into the chemical makeup of trees. I think he might have a master's degree in chemistry. I'm not sure, but he has a fantastic school in North Georgia teaching primitive skills. And I was reading in his book, he was writing about this study that was done at the University of Washington in which they were studying the connectivity of trees. This, this dog is fast becoming a squirrel dog. He loves going after the squirrels. And without any training whatsoever, he will tree a squirrel and just hang out with it. Good boy. Um, but he's a herder, so I, he always comes back to me. Anyway, um, this study, one of the things that was interesting is they were studying the connectivity of trees. And what they did is they, they had two similar trees, and I don't know what the species was. I was reading this in Mark's book. They had two tr similar species of trees and they took a netting and put it completely over uh, one of the trees so it was completely protected. And then they took some worms, something like caterpillars or bagworms or something like that, I can't recall, and put them all over the other tree. And immediately these worms started having a negligible effect, a negative effect on the tree that they were on. And 
that tree that the worms are on, the caterpillars or bagworms or whatever it was, uh, started putting out this vast amount of pheromones that basically instructed the other tree to protect itself. That's crazy, isn't it? It's kind of wild. Uh, Mr. Warren's consideration, and I think it's worthy of thinking about, okay? I'm not saying you have to believe what Mark's saying, although I kind of dig it. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to believe the way I do. But think about the possibility of us having similar pheromones that come off of us that communicate to trees and vice versa. Is that something that we've lost as we've lost connectivity to the wilderness? You know, there's a lot of research that goes into, and I've got a blog piece on the website, and I'll try to find it and link it, uh, where we list all the benefits of being involved in nature. And I think we attribute that often to some sort of just generic feeling. Man, it feels good to be out. You know, we know we get better oxygen out and, and when we're in amongst the trees and stuff of that nature, but what if it's some sort of even more direct connection? Um, how valuable is that? I mean, would you not agree that your typical person who builds a home among a bunch of trees or goes out into the wilderness and stays in the woods, would you not agree that that person probably has a, uh, a more sense of calm about them, the typical person that does such things? Maybe that's their nature and that's why they went there. Maybe, just maybe, it's because they have some sort of connection to the trees, the plants, the animals that are there. And I know some of you that follow me that are, I guess, uh, not of this mindset, you're probably thinking, dude, this Craig has gone freaking crazy. Um, Craig's not gone crazy. I guess if that's true, then Craig has been crazy. I just don't talk about this stuff very often. Um, because people think I'm crazy. I'm not saying you have to believe it. I'm just saying it's worthy of your consideration. So how does that change your interaction with the outdoors? Does it enhance it? Does it make it different? Um, huh. I think it's worthy of consideration. So with that said, a uh, little practical knowledge, a little on the trees, I hope that helps. Uh, if you're looking for those chest and oaks, oh, here's a perfect example. Hey, just came into it. So notice, up there on that hill is where I was. Now we're down here, a little bit lower. And look, white oak, white oak, white oak. That actually is a post oak. There were none of those trees up there. So, um, that's another white oak, another white oak right behind me there. That's a red oak there. It's interesting, isn't it? I didn't plan that either. That was pretty cool. It turned out that way. So with that said, I hope, uh, hope that gives you some practical knowledge on the chestnut oak. Uh, they make a really large acorn, really long, elongated acorn. Uh, I didn't see any. Wasn't really looking for them either, but... Uh, it's by my experience that if you have, for example, let's, let's say I wanted to trap or squirrel hunt right here, I'd still be set up on those white oaks because the squirrels and the deer, turkey, are going to prefer those over those of the chestnut oak, even though the chestnut oak is a subspecies of white oaks. So there you go, another white oak. Another white oak. It's interesting, isn't it? Up on the ridge top, chestnut oaks. No white oaks. Down here on the lower part, I'd say 20% white oaks. And just because I'm familiar, when we get all the way to the bottom over there, that's about 80% white oaks. Ah, using geography and topography for tree identification. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk these things could talk to each other too? Hmm. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. If you want to stay connected, do this. Check out the website, naturereliance.org. That's naturereliance.org. Scroll down to the bottom of the page, join our newsletter. That's where we do all the giveaways. That's where we do all the discounts. That's where we do all the cool stuff for all the cool kids. You'll want to be part of it. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.